away from the ghetto, from the larger ghetto. Larger ghetto was hell. Every ghetto was hell. But the larger ghetto specifically starved. Starvation was this. I was taken away on Saturday morning, a whole story around it, surrounded by dogs, Gestapo, Kripa, you know what Kripa is? Criminal police. Every Jew was considered a criminal. What was the crime? He's alive. I was taken away from Lodge a few months before the liquidation. The liquidation is a euphemistic, it means killing, that's it. The Germans created a special language. They never said, I will kill you or I will shoot you. No, I will lay you down. Liquidation meant killing. Gazing, Arbeit. So it's a special language. I was taken away March the 4th, 1944 from my family never to see them again. And because I was taken away, I survived. If they, the Germans didn't send me out from the ghetto, I would have shared the same lot as my family did. And I started to study the date. The date must contain a message. And I'm not a mystic. I'm a rational guy. But if I find something that can help me, I became mystical. I'm doing it for self, self-preservation, that's it. They sent me away March the 4th. It must have a message. March 4th. Don't stop. Don't give up. So this, if, if, they, if they sent me away March the 10th, I would have found an out. But, but I tried to hold on to something to justify the reason why I, I survived. After the war was over, and after my experience, after the liberation, there was a period of time of two weeks that I was in Poland. There was, I don't know how to explain this, but this was a Polish man 
that had several little carts and they were leaving that German village. They had a large Polish flag and they said anybody that wants to go and join him back to Poland can do so. And I lived with that with the German with the French ex uh, prisoners of war at that time and I said to myself I should go because maybe my mother came back maybe my aunt came back my first responsibility is to see who came back so I will go back to my city so I joined this caravan and indescribable journey we finally reached Warsaw. Warsaw was reduced to rubble. It was unrecognizable. And I had to go to Lodz from Warsaw. I had no money. I had no clothes. I had no luggage. I had nothing. I was just... And there was a man with a semi-truck, sort of. And I found out that this man standing there, he said, hop on, you can go with me. And I hopped on, and we traveled to Lodz. And he stopped on the way, he went to eat. I didn't want to tell him I'm hungry. We drove all the way to Lodz. He never thought of giving me a piece of bread, but I reached Lodz. And when I went to the house that we lived in before, the Polish superintendent who took care of the building reacted with tremendous surprise, not elation, but surprise that I survived and came back. And what for? He said, you don't even have to go to your place because the Germans emptied it. They took the carpets and everything away. There is nothing left and other people lived there. I said, maybe something that's left. I want to go up. And I went up and they wouldn't let me in. I went back in the ghetto, and I can imagine how my father gave my mother the carpet when he had nothing to give, just to make her happy. When the Lodge ghetto was sealed in May 1940, Henrik Ross was forced to move into the ghetto. He managed to get a job as one of the official photographers in the ghetto, which gave him access to film and processing facilities. He used these facilities to secretly take pictures of the suffering of the Jews in the ghetto. He hid his camera under his coat and he opened it slightly and took snaps of images he saw. And 
In this fashion, he managed to accumulate thousands of pictures that show us now what life was like in the ghetto. A few of his pictures display public executions and deportations. One of these pictures was taken in 1944 at the railroad station in the Lodge ghetto. The photograph displays a cattle car and a group of people standing around it. If we look at the framing of the picture, we can see that it is not centered. And this is important because the photographer was very professional and he was skillful. Furthermore, there's actually a black part on the left-hand side on the picture and also building material in the foreground. And all of these images are actually blocking the view of the person looking at the picture. It shows us that he had to hide in order to take the picture. The frame is actually showing the conditions of his hiding place, that he did not manage to take a closer look at the actual scene. Once, as a cleaner, I succeeded in entering the station. The men closed me into a storeroom of cement. I stayed there from six in the morning till seven in the evening until the Germans left and the whole transport was sent off. I saw this transport leaving. I heard the cries. I saw the beatings. I saw the shootings. I saw them being murdered. Henrik Ross risked his life in order to show what the Nazis tried to hide. And when we combine his testimony with a picture, we actually learn much more about the scene that we are seeing in the picture. We see people boarding the train, but we don't know what happens inside the cattle car. And we also don't know what happens to the people when they arrive at their destinations. So only if we contextualize the picture and put it into context with other archives like testimonies, maps or historical accounts, do we gain a better understanding of what was going on. When the liquidation of the ghetto began in 1944, Ross decided to bury his archive into the grounds of the ghetto so it could be dug up later and bear witness to the persecution of European Jews. Just before the closure of the ghetto, I buried my negatives in the ground in order that there should be some record of our tragedy, namely the total elimination of the Jews from Lodz by the Nazi executioners. I was anticipating the total destruction of Polish Jewry. I wanted to leave an historical record of our martyrdom. Henrik Ross survived the Holocaust and he managed to locate and dug up his material after the war. In comparison to the perpetrator pictures, we can see that his collection is exceptional because he clearly loved human beings and social interactions and felt compelled to commemorate the Jewish life in the Lodz ghetto.